a.k.a. Conan Abraham Kroma. He's here with us, and we're going to use the rest of the time this evening to talk about this issue that is affecting our country, as we all heard in the um, state of the uh, nation address of uh, President Joseph Boakai. He declared drug and substance abuse a public health emergency. So what is happening beyond the scene and what is happening on the scene to ensure that this emergency is brought back to uh, normalcy? Uh, welcome to the bumper show, Colonel Kruma. Thank you very much. Uh, it is a pleasing pleasure. Um, Thank you very much. It is a pleasing pleasure to be in the ears of your listening public. Um, this is my first time on this show, actually. On the bumper. On the bumper show. Yeah, but not your first time at ERB. Yeah, BC has always been my place I want to be. I know, I know, I uh, know. But no, it, it is it is indeed a pleasure being on the bumper show. This is, you call it bumper because people are, bumper to bumper yeah, going bumper by home. Yeah, bumper to bumper, not uh, like home town. Like. So, so for me... Yeah, it, it, it is. It is a pleasure being here. Okay, how do they say they say happy El Mubarak or is it just Mubarak? happy eat? Just a happy eat. eat. Okay, yes. okay, happy eat. Okay, yes. so today, today I celebrate uh, the end of Ramadan. Yeah, sure. And uh, let me say congratulations to you and other uh, yes. Muslims out there. Um, I wanted to start uh, Conor Kuma by first of all explaining it to the public because not many people sometimes want to hear about the drug enforcement agency. It's all about you know running after those who are dealing drugs, running after those who are uh, you know into drugs, but. What is the core mandate of the LDA? Is it more than just chasing after drug uh, users and uh, traffickers? No, basically, uh, I think drug traffic, uh, chasing after drug trafficker, drug offender, is basically just a part of what we do. Okay. We sensitize uh, people, kids on the street. We go, we got community outreach. Uh, basically, reaching out to folks, letting them know the danger of the substance abuse. Uh, and then providing ad light. We also provide information for people who are who have established rehabilitation center. Okay, they come to us because rehabilitation is a core part of our work. You provide so, in information, but you don't get into it. No, we we have rehabilitation as a core as a core activity under the DEA. Okay, it is a statutory. It is part of our statutory mandate. Okay. and so but what we've done what we've done is to establish private. Mm -hmm public relationship, private-public partnership okay. with folks out there who will actually come on this process of rehabilitation and then uh, reaching out to the folks out there, preventing the process of drug addiction uh, is a part of our co-activities. Co co um, and, and, and so we, we basically not just running into ghettos and, and then waiting for that, that. That is a reactive move. We, 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 we've invested in, in prevention, uh, being proactive in this process, and uh, that has taken us a, a little bit a step ahead, okay. um, basically. And then the new drug law has been a very helpful situation because okay. uh, it has established a deterrent principle. Okay. Um, because once the drug law is, is utilized for a particular person, um, after the prevention, after the collaboration, we, we, we carry on with other stakeholders like the Ministry of Youth and Sport uh, and uh, Ministry of Health and all of those other partners. We now come to the issue of going after folks who are doing drugs. Yeah. And once we succeed in one, we find ourselves establishing um, a deterrent principle. One is general, one is specific. So it's okay. been a good thing. And, and indeed, we we'll talk more about the drugs uh, uh, law, but mm. uh, before your ascendancy, before the transition, before you were preferred at mm. the, uh, you know, the LDA. LDA, we know how much the country was going when it comes to the issue of uh, drugs. And uh, some citizens, in fact, led by former senator of uh, Maryland County, John Balut, even yeah. went at the DEA headquarters protesting that, yes. uh, you know, there should be a change in the leadership because they were not doing much. You are there now. You came with so much prestige at that uh, in that position. Tell us the state of the DEA. Oh, uh, John, talking about John Balu, uh, before I go to the state, uh, John Balu has been a, a, a very good partner 
and um, he's, he's a very good advocate uh, and so we, we 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 we've spoken with him uh we uh, planned some activities with him we had a very lavish uh, uh meeting with him he shared with us some of his um activities some of the things he wants us to do uh, i just been busy with this whole budget hearing and uh, and stuff and putting some internal wrangling in in order uh, in internal internal maneuvering uh, let me put it that way okay and then before i can get to that we will get to john balu he, he has a very good place okay so we are going to go there but talking about the da uh before and after our ascendancy uh it, it is something that um we think we like you said we came with um that pers that persona and that that prestige quote unquote uh, but um we met a, a system that were dormant, and uh, with all due respect to my predecessors, was dormant. So, and maybe that was that precipitated that Mr. Balu's uh, uh, going to the LDA head office, and and so with that with that activity, we decided to uh, work on a systematic approach to do what they had to talk about the uh, administrative instruction, operational instruction, some of those stuff, some of those element that we actually gave teeth to most of those systematic approach that established that was established within the LD8 from the from the beginning. And so now we've got we becoming to beginning to see exactly where they are. I am now going also myself into the nitty-gritty, into the meat of the DA, LDA okay. to, to the extent where the guys who have been functioning who have not been utilized, we're trying to utilize them now. So they've taken that role. Uh, we're trying to empower some of them and to get to where they're supposed to do and then and, and then move from the office we find ourselves in i mean the guys took the yeah, guys complain about that yeah, place too much yeah bro they took the guys and put them in a cage and the cage is next to the dump site imagine the cage and then you got caged in the dump site you can't mm. breathe and you're just sitting there and, and you're there fighting drugs you're there fighting drugs and you leave from a slump uh, looking like area to go out there to see have you, uh, you have you seen some of the drug dealers resident mm. the guys intentionally create that dilapidated situation so as to not call attention to themselves and and and, and then uh, it's, it's, it's deplorable so you can't be coming from a deplorable situation and going to do that so it, it has its own psychological effect so we're trying to run away from that building um we've, we've identified one um we'll be making some contacts next week and then so we can leave that building and try to breathe a little bit mm -hmm. and utilize some of the functionary that we have in the LDA as well. So we, we are going to do a, a transition from where we were and to a better situation like, based upon the, the level of support and the political will that we've gotten from this president. We're going to use uh, utilize some of those uh, political capital we have. Mm. Still inside the DEA, when you took over initially, you uh, told your guys, in fact, uh, this this issue of aiding and abetting, because we hear you know rumors that whenever the DEA is going somewhere to raid, you have insiders who usually call Thank and you. give these drug uh, traffickers the information that the DEA is coming, and sometimes before they get there, all of them left so there's nothing you can do about it you talk about you know those in the system who are involved in aiding and abating have you identified some of them are you weeding them out now well what we've done we've asked in our budget to actually uh create a, a responsible uh man manpower arrangement uh, we have so many volunteers that was brought in but my predecessors to us to help the limited numbers they had okay and because the system were not properly utilized so you had little numbers then and, and because the numbers are little and the budget allocation was so minimal so you needed to bring volunteer and that has its own shortfall because they bring the volunteer you need to pay them nobody's working free sure? but that aspect was not taking strong consideration because the guys that you have volunteering will not have fiduciary responsibility to the state to themselves so they have it to themselves and then a lot of corruption will be will, 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 will come in play and so because i am a i'm afraid of corruption so far it's not even funny because mm. 
the reason why I'm so run, I'm so afraid of it because my grand my grandfather was a paramount chief. Okay. And all he told me was that the best thing you can do is to protect this family name. That's one of the reasons why well, all of my 30 years plus in, in state arrangement, I don't go around taking public money. Uh, and, and, and the DEA thing, the drug dealers can just say goodbye because I am not, I'm a Muslim. And beside being a Muslim, I'm a haji. There's no way I can do drugs. There's no way I can take drugs money. Mm. So I'm far from that. And then I also have family members who have been affected by drugs. So I come over with a chip on my shoulder making sure that we get rid of this to the best of our abilities. So okay. the insider you see in this process, we will weed them out. We ostracize all of them. That's one of the reasons when the issue with Japan happened, the last, the first drug situation we did, I was there after we did the surveillance for almost two weeks, we realized it was actionable then. Instead of waiting to go to the court to ask for the search warrant, we had our people doing buy and bust. They were already in there. And because the doors were open already, we had to go in there, act like we were already there. But then we put some of the guys in custody. And then we stay in there and ask the guy to bring about the search warrant because the doors are still closed. Okay. And then we had to do that. Had we not done so that... So the search warrant was on its way, you already had men in there? I already had men in there that want to wow. go buy and bust. Hmm. They're already there buying from the from, from the people. So it was not it was not no more possibility for them to say, okay, let's call them to warn them up because we had place covered up and stuff like that. Those are the kind of little tactics that we employ. Um basically because we want to remain in the confine of the law. Okay. To such you cannot go in the people uh you can't receive any drugs in there and say you you basically are gonna be admitted, it will be admitted, admissible in court. So we wanted to make sure we did and without and using the search warrant with a sheriff to search the place. And that's what we did. Have your officers at the LDA uh, already started doing their drug tests? As you said, you were going yes. to show that they all we, go through that. We now the thing about it, we got this, we got this soak, we got this, uh, this um, volunteer pack up in the place there. I mean, everyone you see, my man, how long have you been? I've been here for four years. You, are you a D agent? No, no, chief. I'm, I'm a volunteer. I'm, I'm stay. I got You know what I mean? Okay. So I can subject this guy into any kind of restricted situation. When in fact the guy is, I, I don't believe in the volunteer situation. To be honest with you, okay. I believe in managing the little numbers. The numbers that you gave me. Once the guy has responsibility to the state, he has a sworn officer. I prefer to deal with him than deal with a guy who's a volunteer and get a guy blood test. I mean, a, a drug test. And the next day, I can't even prosecute him because I don't have any right to do that. Mm. So we are going to go do that random thing. And then before we can start to recruit most of these guys who are volunteer, they will have to go through regular drug tests. Okay. They have to be have to go through background check, which we are doing already. We have to go through a lot of checks that they should go through. To in the community, the community will have to know your at your your integrity. We'll check you out there. To whether you you have any background. That we need to correct and people will give their own testimony about that okay. once we can find that to complete that aspect we'll be bringing to the new dea a, 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 a set of personnel that would have gone through all of the uh, all of the arrangement that made them um a officer of officer for good okay so to speak okay and uh i i want to you know i want us to talk a little bit about what you just spoke about mm -hmm. uh, in fact so far one of your landmark cases uh the issue from clara town you know uh one morning i just got uh call oh the guy who they say abi kuma arrest they say outside or oh, any city oh, no. <laughs> so right away i took phone to a call uh, you know your pr and ask him yeah. no no yeah, uh, that guy true. is still in the guy, the guy scared me too so myself was scared okay so i had to go to the center prison to go see the guy face to face and you show him in the idea and i showed him hands i said <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he started me plow me. Yeah. How come I, I'm I'm falling? Because what he what they did, he wanted to they wanted to minimize the charge on him into a biddable situation, which is not possible. And the, I, the I, law is not calling. Law is not calling. The law is not law is the law is a law. Quote, quote unquote, musability. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the law is a law. You have to face the law as it is. And so, what we did, we basically found ourselves uh, making sure that. Uh, the law is strengthened, and thank God we got guys in, in the House of Representatives in the Senate 
who are basically following this process. And and and, and the good thing, and um, the Labyrinth Board must be very blessed because the Senate and the House of Representatives are all follow up, follow suit, and they're making sure that this thing they've actually transferred just a committee now, they transfer the drug situation into a statutory arrangement. Okay. So it's giving more weight in the House of Representatives. And thanks to the speaker for that, for that initiative as well. And so we we moving forward towards it. Because drug situation is a national, for me, it's a national emergency. Yes. Sierra Leone has already done it. They yeah. give it a national emergency status. And I think uh, the health emergency that we, status we give it is fine. And, and I think we beyond that at this point in time with one million of our citizens on drug. Um, one million of our one citizens? One million, 20% of our, 20 percent of our population of five point uh, something is on drugs at this point in time. And that for me is 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 clear and present danger for me. Of course. And uh Konokuma, what what is this uh, uh single most or the most popular drugs we find today during your raids, you know, those ones that are confiscated, which, which one do you find of the high high the highest com uh, quantity? Don't even finish your statement. I'll just Kush. tell you Kush. Kush is something that um is cheap and it's found in the slum community, found in most of our community as well. Where and is it coming from? Kuch is coming from Sierra Leone. That's the place of residence. Uh, it's now, now, because of Kuch, the Sierra Leone government has created the national emergency specifically for Kuch. Yeah, yeah. Because they basically, uh, they transported it to us here. Mm. And apparently they already you know, did it with it in that part of the world. And so they thought to find a neighboring country and the best neighboring country they have because we have porous border. Mm -hmm was uh, Liberia, and, and and that's one of the reasons why most of my constitution have been in the western region. We've been focusing the Cape Mount, Bopolo, bombing area to a larger extent, and we've made several arrests in, in, in that area. And we've got several citizens of Sierra Leone, I mean, of that particular part of the world, in jail. Mm. And um, so it is. It is something very serious. Is it something that is grown or mixed chemical? Or because I read on the BBC a, when they mm. had a ban, it, it was said that it is made out of human bones. Well, no, it, listen, it's made out of anything that would be inimical to your well-being. Mm. It is made of rat poison. Wow. Yeah, rat poison. Uh, anything they mix it up to it and they just produce it and then because of the because of the viability because of the because of the strength of it what the guys to do is cheap it's small they got the low piece of it they sell it to you for a hundred dollar hmm. hundred Liberian dollar so, so it, it is a drug of choice for the folks in the slump community because they don't have enough money they want to get high their own social issue which I'm not talking about, which I'm not going to talk about but they well, this, they decided to actually go with Kush. Uh, Kush, Kush, is, Kush has been the most devastating effect we've had in the country. Thousands of our young people are, are dying mm. about it. And, so, and and it's coming from uh, Serdin, according to you. So what, what has been your, you know, collaboration now with your regional partners, especially on the Serdin side? All right. So what we do, we uh, have I've started communication with the Serdinian drug, drug czar. Are we going to have a meeting with them? Um, they want us to go to Freetown um, to have a meeting. And I'm also, uh, we'll be leasing with our foreign people so as to organize this Monterey Road conference so we can talk to both Guinea, Sierra Leone, Ivory Coast, and to include Nigeria as well. So that at the end of the day, when we when we have that meeting, we can discuss the issue because it's no longer a Liberia issue. It's no longer a Sierra Leone issue. Now, Yesterday was Sierra Leone. Uh, today is Liberia. Tomorrow is going to be Guinea. The day after, they're going to be Africa's, and and, Sir, and and then and then Nigeria and then Ghana. So I want us to have a meeting of the mind as to how we can all decipher, find reason as to how we can uh, deal with this issue as they are. Because if we cannot tackle it right now. The Ebola effect is going to take its course, and, and then it start to spread like wildfire in the in, in, in the sub region because the social issue that and the young people that are that are connected to this particular arrangement, they're all around the sub region. They you know, and so we share young 
young young population. We share the youngest population in West in Africa is in West Africa. So we got to find a way amongst ourselves to see if we can discuss this issue. And so that's thus the need for this uh uh conference yes, you know. so that so that we can actually discuss it. And, and that's one of the reasons why I want to take a West African tour first and talk to the Sierra Leonean, talk to the Guinean, talk to the Ghanaian, talk to the Nigerian, talk to the Ghanaian as well. So that at the end of that particular discussion, then we can now have a meeting of the mind. The fact now that, that Sierra Leone has joined us into declaring some yeah. status for this particular issue, it, it gave us an opportunity to advance the situation. From us now, we start to go to other parts. And then we try to go to folks that will help us in actually combating this particular menace. It, it, it is not a single situation anymore. It has to go beyond where our expectations have always been. And mm -hmm. uh, so as to save our countries. Uh, our country, Liberia, is at a crossroad, to be honest with you. Because if you have one million of your citizens are struggling with drugs at this level, you now can see yourself uh, in about five years from now, you probably you have about uh, 200,000 people. Uh, joining the one million, so it is something that, uh, and the president was very fast and very swift in declaring the national health situation. And then I hope, uh, with the zeal and the enthusiasm that's been following this thing, the issue provide the the necessary budgetary allotment. I'm not satisfied with the budgetary allotment that's been provided. Okay, I'm sure the president well, is not satisfied. What is there for the DEA? You don't want to know. <laughs> I think the public wants to know. <laughs> it's two million dollars. Wow. Yes, and it's, it's scary. I'm ashamed to say it. I can't even discuss that with my with my folks. It's not there. even anything than uh, the uh, hundred million that. Let me tell you what the two million dollars is. Mm. Two million is one point six million goes to personal services. Okay, so you got four four hundred thousand that's supposed to go for goods and services, and so you'll be left with maybe about. Hundred thousand dollars to for operation. In that operation, you got intelligence, because the, the, the problem we have in this now only in Maserato. Now only Maserato. You talking about whole country. And then besides that, drugs is not only fought. You know, to have an effective drug enforcement arrangement in Liberia, you must go beyond the borders, because besides uh, this process, besides kush, heroin, cocaine is also passing the way through us. Liberia is, is a hub, it's, 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 it's a route for these hard drugs outside of Liberia. So you will not only wait across the border in Bowater side to wait for the drugs to come. Mm. You got to have your eyes in Sierra Leone. You have to have your eye in Guinea. You have to eye in Ghana. At one point in time, uh, 1994, I was chief of CID, but I was in charge of drug enforcement at the time. And the little training I did was to give him an opportunity to actually have a, an eye into this thing. And with an eye in outside of Liberia, we arrested the ADC airline because our eye outside yeah, Liberia ADC. gave us the intel as to what was happening. So we started to, we arrested the, the airline. Echo Mark were here. I mean, I was just 29 years old then, very, very young. We arrested a Bernie Samakar director of police. When we arrested it there, they wonder how we did it. How we arrested, but, but but we had we didn't wait yet to say okay let's wait when ADC can we check it no we had people giving us intel which was spending money to mm. to provide an information and it was on its way to Liberia it, it came to Liberia okay. we arrested four point two million dollar worth of cocaine on the plane then that was a huge bust for us That's and close. we arrested diplomats we arrested all the folks on it but it gave me an opportunity to realize that drug drug war. The fight against drugs is not only sitting in your little country waiting for it because it's an international uh, business. So, but it's the folks out there who's proponing these things, and I understand too that the envelope we have in Liberia is a little, little, is small, and you got competing priorities all around the place. However, drugs is the most singular devastation for our country at this point in time, and, and, and to not concentrate on that. And, and have a competing priorities, analyzing and then aligning it with other aspects. I know education is very important. I know health is important. I know uh, agriculture, you know, everything is there. But you have a process that has been identified by the World Food Program, that has been identified by the national system, that this is killing your people. And if you equate that to other priorities that you have, 
then um, when you have any deficition, then it's on you. However, I've seen now that the, the pendulum is a little pushing up. The folks are becoming to understand that the folks that elected them are dying. They are now at the, at the House of Representatives finding, having a clearing call to actually do something about what is necessary for the survivability of our, com of our rural communities. Is the, the, the representative of the Vera, Vera, Vera uh, 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 legislative arrangement are now becoming to understand that they have to do something. And Ahmed Buza from Basel, uh, Ahmed yeah, Goswa is, yeah. is a fight, it's a fighter. It's one of the guys that we have in the house that is doing it. Whose ability of our person has been very much instrumental in getting us to do what we have to do. He's been one of our biggest fighters. And the folks in the the folks and the chairman of the ways and means and, and the folks in the senate um the senate has been so helpful and uh, to the point where we, we we think there will be some shift in the priority that it posted okay you are listening to the bumper show and we have as guests on this uh edition the uh, the last segment uh, the head of liberia's drug enforcement agency corner uh, Abraham Kroma, he's our uh, guest here today, and we're talking, you know, more about the issue of drugs. I'm sure uh, it will be important to you. It is important to you. You will want to participate, but you will hold on a little bit as we discuss later on. I'll open the lines so you can uh, have your uh, contributions coming through. Uh, Conor Kroma, uh, some of your predecessors, right? Um, many times, why they cry about. Uh, you know, you already started talking about the issue of the law, but the cry about the law, the drug law is weak, is uh, available. You find you, you jail the man today, tomorrow you see in the community again. So with this new law, you know, how effective it is for your work? And, and, and I, you know, it, it, was, it was a blessing for me to come to the LDA uh, at the time where there is a new drug law that will stop me because I would have been, I would have been up my head to see a drug dealer that I've fought hard to bring to court to, to the police. Why even discussing the mayor already bill has been prepared, the man is out of the way. But to find out that the drug law, and I would say the previous administration and um, Jala and the rest of the guys that fought to get this drug law passed, I say kudos to them. They did it not for anybody but for love of country. I think what he has done is given us an opportunity to now hold people accountable. When you sell drugs, when you traffic drugs, when you peddle drugs, you'll be held liable. You have 10 to 15 years sitting down behind bars and also will, will seize your property. Okay. Uh, and so that, that's the component I love. If you sell drugs in a particular home and we identify it as a home and you're selling drugs over there, you usually using it as a place of sale, we will seize it. We will sell it and we will contribute to the national comfort. Mm. So that that for me, and then you can't just walk out while the man is being persecuted and you take the man off and you sign, put a bill for him. It's non biddable at all level. So it is giving us an opportunity to fight hard. Now, every time I wake up from bed, I realize that I have I can now arrest people who are bad people who are killing our children without them going free. Mm. And, and that that's that's those are the highlights of my day. Mm. You, you, I'm sure you were around when uh, $100 million worth of uh, cocaine entered Liberia that was confiscated, it was burned, and guys were sent to court and later on walked out of the court with a not guilty verdict. Uh, see, you see, just... You're making my head hurt. Yeah, you just, you just mentioned that uh, drugs now, is, Liberia is a transit point, right? How did then you, what were you going to do differently and as you are now what are you going to do in this role to ensure that that doesn't repeat itself again you know i think the folks um and and, and again um the the fact that those guys came in they were arrested it's just chain of custody it's just it's just little things that you have to do to make sure things are straightened up because the drug dealer and they're collaborated in government or in a system they will wait for you to make mistake, and then they utilize that in court. Because the court cannot do for you what you do for yourself. So if you mess up, you go to court and you put up something that is not uh, giving you a good chance. And, 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 and basically, 
that will give that will be the best way out of them. Yeah, go ahead. So for you to make those mistakes, and then when you enter court with it, and they will utilize it on you, and, and that's what they did to the folks out there. And then what I said, I, I think it was intentional. I think the lapses that were put up there to get the guys free were intentional by the system at the time. The intentional allows the custody, the chain, the chain of custody messed up. The transferred and the security and follow up on those things. They allowed it to be, they were very lack of desiccant about it. And last effect in the interpretation of the principle that conformed to them and giving people status that they didn't deserve. So no detailed painstaking investigation were conducted. So at the end of the day, for me, that was a recipe for dismissal. And so I, I can't blame those guys. They did what they had to do to get away with it. But I, I would have hoped that, I will hope now that the DEA now, that the government and the people of Liberia now learned a lesson. Mm. For us, we will go to the bottom of every case. We'll cross all the T's and that, uh, and, and do all the all the R's, that all the all, all, all the R's, to the point where we can find out that we will not be penetrable, because these guys are, are very smart, and 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 they use the law to the best of their ability. But if our justice system is 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 opening itself to them. They will use you, and 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 I'm hoping now now the new justice minister I think is a different guy. Uh, I think he's he's a he's a he's a he's a, he's a defense, defense lawyer, so he knows all the tricks. So and then uh, he can find a way to actually go through these guys in and again. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 I can tell you, I'm not resting. Take it for me. The guy, other guys that was that was left as the unindicted co-conspirator. I will go after them on that case yes okay because the other guys have been prosecuted already that's fine you, you don't want to do double jeopardy i, I agree i'm a student of law so i know that the other part the other part that has to do with the unindicted co-conspirator we are going to go after them we're preparing the statements now the questionnaire to send to them so we can get them to answer they can be best of friends for the whole world i, I will care less you cannot come to our country. You cannot be here and and then use our country, tarnish our country reputation, and the go of impunity. Mm. No, we can, we're not going to do it. Mm. And, and in that case, uh, something else that was in the public or some people thought that maybe uh, some of the judges or some of the prosecutors were not too you know they, they didn't understand the issue of drugs and that is why the prosecution went that way we recommend a special court for trying uh, a drug uh, cases that would be the best you can find the a, a special case special court like you had a special court for arm robbery i would think that with the enormity of the problem we can have a special court to address the issue of drugs however why we why has we reached towards that creation of a special court? The court that we have now, the sacro court that we have now that is addressing this is called here, that is actually addressing this case now. I think the judge is a very good guy. Okay. And he's a, he's a guy who's focused, who has his who has his, who has very good legal legal head on his shoulders. What should be done is that the officer, the investigative part of this of, of, of drug cases will have to be painstakingly done. I think the solicitor general and the county attorneys and the city solicitors will now have a collaboration in addressing these issues because they have to now, we have to, we are now, I'm now bringing in lawyers, I'm bringing in a chain of lawyers into the DA to review all of our cases and, and, and go over and over and over all, all of our, uh, our witnesses private prosecutor, everybody that who's have to do with the case. So that when defense counsel sees the kind of lawyer we have sitting on our side, they know exactly we've already covered all of the situation we have. Mm. And myself being an investigator myself, I personally leave my office and go down to the investigation, call the investigator and go through cases as they are so as to be definite so that not to repeat the nonsense that happened in that hundred million dollar case. Mm. It, it doesn't make sense to me. Every time I'm reading the case file, I'm 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 having headache mm. because of the lapses, 
because of the the the, the flaws that you find in 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 the criminal in, in the procedure. It's just the, the messed them out on procedure and and, and the procedure in 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 in, in law is is very very serious. If if you just Jump on procedure, you, you you mess yourself up. And, and there was another one at the uh, Roberts International Airport where just a substance, I think, transition or change to several uh, substances in the period of uh, several days or so. Uh, if, if that is uh, happening again, or if that could yeah. happen again, you talking about a quote unquote Finabono something they want to happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> can I independently not, verify not, that one? Well, so. not, not well, you know what. I don't want to go through the argument on this radio, but okay. that's for a different show. But I can tell you, to answer that question directly, mm. there is, um, we have the cases, uh, that particular case, the, 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 the Moringa, the Moringa, the guy who is the security guy who was out there, that was the weakness of the law. The law, because the law was so weak, they allowed the people to be put on bail and the guy jumped the bill, he's going to America. So that's what the bill will do for you. The weakness of the bill. Those are some of the side effects of the bill we had. All right. But however, the guys that are placed on bill that are that are here, we one term of court is already gone. The other guys in the other term of court will go. We will bring them to the second term of court. Once the court is called, we are now making talking to our lawyers to see if they can go back and recall that case so that we can prosecute it. We're not going to allow these people to go with impunity. No drug fighting. Once the drug dealers realize that there's a guy, that there are people now, serious-minded people who are fighting this stuff, they will have a second thought in coming to Liberia. The way we had, they had, we had them come to Liberia, just nearly will it up and down. I'm not going to do that. If I arrest you, you go to court, I will be there. I will be looking at you while you're going through your procedure. And at the end of the day, when you're convicted, I want to be able to escort you into the center prison. And and and, and basically, so so to so the Moringa's case. It's now being reviewed by our lawyers. And we are going to make sure we are represented in the, in the court because now there is no more build, building this process. We're not going to do expo facto. We're not mm -hmm. going to do anything different. But the guys that was put on bail, we're now going to put them, we're trenching all of our all of our facts and escorting them in accordance with the law. People, people think that uh, those in drug, um, involved in drug trafficking are very powerful people you know uh with your presence in this role you seem to be putting your chest out for the bullet for liberia are you not afraid i am my grandfather's son hmm. yes okay. my grandfather was chief musa kroma okay Palma chief of gompa city in Makari. that's my grandfather and he what he told me don't be afraid to do anything, just the wrong thing. He knows he's advised all of us that uh, don't do the don't do the wrong thing. So once I know what I'm doing is right and it's within the confines of the law and for the law of country, for this only country that I have, I will always do the best and the best thing possible. So I'm not afraid. I, I can say that on the radio. Though, since I started this advocacy, this fight, they have guys, they've been trying all kinds of, you know, we saw they take a guy picture that I was sitting away in the, in the hotel where A.B. Kuma is sitting with a drug dealer. He's sitting there with a drug dealer. A guy that I've hung out with, everybody here, they said that the man was a drug dealer. But they're not going to find me doing that. I don't do drugs, money. I don't do drugs. And I'm, I'm a Kuma. We don't do those stuff. The kind of Kuma I am, I'm from Gompa City. We don't do these things. I don't know about other people. So we, I'm not afraid of those things. And they're not going to catch me into corruption. Okay. You're not going to come to bribe me. Don't do it because you're not going to succeed in doing it. Okay. Let's squeeze a few calls in now because we don't have much time. Uh, zero. Uh, it is 0514096. You can call that number. You want to be a part of the program. Zero, it is 0514096. Call that number. You will be live on the bumper show. We are talking to Connor Abraham Kroma. He is the uh, director general at the Liberia Truck Enforcement Agency. Let's hear from this person. Hello? Good afternoon. How are you? Welcome. Um, my name is E. Collins Wongwe, and I call from Brooklyn. Wongwe, just take a minute now and ask your question or make your yeah, comment. Uh, I, I want to know, uh, let, let uh, 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 Mr. Kumar uh, explain a bit about the drugs that were captured in Picano. 
during the regime of uh, uh, the uh, the cold regime. The 40 million naira drugs. I did not hear him commenting on it. Okay, the 40 million uh, dollars. Okay, okay. He will he will definitely uh, talk about that. Let's take another person. Hello. Hello, you are on this line. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Hello. You are live on the program. Tell us your name, where you yeah. come from. You say your name is? Okay, make your point quickly. Well, I think that person is uh, holding us hostage. Hello? Hello, caller. Okay. Hello? Yeah. Sorry, sorry. I I caught you off. I caught you off. But uh, Honorable Kroma, you will respond to the issue of that forty million because yes, he he's yeah. right. There were two. Uh, the, yeah, the first one was hundred million. The other yeah, one was 40 million. forty million. Yeah. And th that that's the frustration of the system. I mean, if, if you had the first one coming and the second one uh, uh, came to the resume process, and then at the same time. Nobody's held live before it. The first first 40, 100 million, we started to give assignment. We gave complaint. We said it was this person. All right, we put them in jail and they went and the guys left. So now you have another 40 million. What happened? You keep telling me we, we didn't have anybody to be arrested for it. And then, but it came to in, through a particular system. Mm. And so what, what, what that says to you? Um, I am of the strong conviction that we, we didn't do well with it, with it with the process. And and and, I, and, I, and I'm of the strong conviction that uh, most of the loopholes we had in that system, we tried to patch them. We've gone to the free port. We've established, I just spoke to the port manager today, my fact, at the executive mansion. And I explained to him, he said, yeah, we're going to be establishing some other stuff. I explained to him, we're going to be establishing some other further detail, some stringent measure there. Uh, we're also going to the RIA. We're establishing different port into the process, so as to put up a, a little bit of stringent measure. We, there's no more VIP passage at the RIA. Okay. You come into the VIP now, you have to leave your goods, your, your stuff. The, the doors that we have on the other side is now no longer accessible to diplomat. And the only vice president and the president can actually use that process anymore. So okay. we're we doing a little bit of thing to stack most of these things. We will be extending ourselves to the rural ports, Maryland, San Jose, all the places. We'll be extending. That's why we need this budget to be passed the way we send it, so as to cover the port of Buchanan, port of San Jose, and port of Maryland. Okay. I'm sorry I kept you on the line because uh, uh, something very important was uh, being said. So uh, you can still call us. We can take a few more of your calls. Zero eight eight zero five one four zero nine six. Hello. Hello. Yes. Pablo, how are you doing? This is Chad Davis. Chad Davis, sorry. Chad Davis, I'm Stevie Zone from Little Whiskey. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Director, I have two questions for you. Yes, sir. Two days ago, I have learned that you have threatened to withdraw your officers from the bureau of bullets if the joint security don't cooperate with you. My first question says, is that because there are too much com uh, compromises in the joint security at the bullets? The second one says, if you were successful to have withdrawn your officer from the rural bullets, what mechanism will you put in place to allow the LDA to work independently by stopping the influx of drugs into this country without the joint security cooperation? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, the issue of uh, withdrawal from the border is something that uh, a little bit of mischaracterization. However, the general context was to make sure that uh, we will go back to the Ministry of Justice, the Joint Security Head, so as to strengthen the work of the Joint Security. Because what I saw in my own surveillance and was that the folks who come, the 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 somebody leave the car, and including my own DEA people. To mm -hmm. be honest with you, they leave, they go down to the Joint Security, they leave, they leave small thing that the big truck is hundred dollars. The smaller one is $25, $75 and $25. And, and and basically, not much of a check will be done. Okay. And and then, um, except where we, we go over some of those stuff, we we set up a contact contact arrangement. 
and, and then uh, we will be making some buzz. We said that we are going to go back to the Ministry of Justice to see if we can strengthen the work of the Joint Security at the Vero Borders um, so as to curtail some of these activities. And since that time, the Joint Security had, uh, had been strengthened, and um, now we, we, we now hello? rearrange most of the stuff. Yes, hello. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, uh, the show was with the director. I uh, really admire the job you are doing. We we'll look at the country from 2022 to 2023, the condition our people were in when it comes to trust. We look up for the two months, just two more services. We look at the level. I think we we'll have to tell you thank you. We we'll thank God, thank you that yeah, you are working. So, all the just security, you are right. Because those guys, if he allows many security to take part in all the rest and things, they the same people. The city will be happening. Taking the full calling, my man will come over there tomorrow. Your mother will come in there. Will come over there tomorrow. My man, your mother will come in there. It will be continue happening. And it will have our men, our brothers, our sisters who are taking it in. They have more contact with these people, giving the small small thing. And your way, your way will not be. So a goal for you to have independent job. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you so much. Let's take the last yeah. caller. Hello. Yeah, good afternoon. Welcome. Hello. Yeah, thank you. I'm Jay Henry calling from uh, Tingas Village. I want to say thank you for the show and the director. Uh, I just want to know from him what, what is his term um, against some of his officers who will find themselves also taking into the jobs. Some of them even get drunk while going to job. I just want to know what will be his term from today. All right. Okay. Well, um, thank you very much uh, to the many callers. Uh, they stand against guys who get drunk or the uh, the guys with bad deportment. Uh, we are going to go after them uh, very strongly because they have no place in the new DEA. Um, they will have to uh, conform to the the standard that we set up. Um, Disciplinary action is something that I am all for uh, because without disciplinary action, like if you go to the police academy, the first thing you have there is a course called discipline and courtesy. That's something that I encourage every new officer uh, going to the academy to actually master because once you are disciplined, all other stuff will follow. And so, so if you get drunk, you are not disciplined. You have no place in the DEA. If you take drugs, you should just forget it. You have no place, no part to play in the new DEA. So you can rest assured, sir. Um, if you know of any of them, call call me up. We will address them. We will take care of them. If you just know any of them. Um, once you find any DEA officer that is drunk, I mean, we have a lot of volunteers out there. But a, 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 D, a DEA officer, there's a soon officer, and once they are drunk, we have no place for them in our in our organization. Okay. All right. So uh Connor Chroma, thank you yes. for coming. We are wrapping up now. But uh while you are taking your parting comment, I want to tell us how do you want to see Liberia with the current emergency we are in? Uh how you want to see Liberia okay. when you leave in this position. Um I, I want to see Liberia as a country that I that I saw my forefather living. I, I saw my my grandfather in Ganta uh, managing a society that was uh, full of hope. Um, that uh, I can see within the eyes of President uh, President Boaka, his determination to see a very peaceful country, uh, a country free of drugs. And that's the kind of country that I want to leave this country with. And that's one of the reasons why I joined this particular fight as well, because I wanted to participate, I wanted to help this president to actually create an environment where our children will live free without drugs and without crime at the level in which we find ourselves in today. Uh, it's, 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 it's very dangerous. Our, our country has become a little bit dangerous than, uh, than for my own, 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 own accepted. And I think so we will be watching to see this country. I, I want to see this country, the best country that we can find in West Africa. We were that before. We are the country of um, 
Joseph Jingy Rabbits. We are the country that uh, uh, Mr. Nelson Mandela came and saw refuge. Okay. All of these guys, so, 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 all of these guys came here. The rest of the world came to us for survival. We no longer that country. I want to and see this country to come to that solution. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for coming. He is the uh, Director General of the Liberia Drug Enforcement Agency, Conan Abraham Kroma. He's been our guest on this final segment of the Bumper Show. Tomorrow at 4 o'clock is another edition of the program. To that time, let me say bye-bye for now. My name is Chad Davis. Have yourselves a wonderful wonderful evening.